Some of our recent low-end GPU benchmarks have included Overwatch, but we had limited means to benchmark the game in a standardized environment due to its multiplayer nature. This sparked interest internally, and GN's Patrick Lathan set forth to study Overwatch's performance during real matches versus humans, bot matches, and the practice range. Our testing then expanded as we furthered research, ultimately turning into a complete test of the graphics settings in the game. And so we bring to you our complete Overwatch graphics optimization guide for 2017. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by EVGA and their EVGA GTX 1080 Ti FTW3, which should be available very shortly at this point, within a few weeks. Click the link in the description below for more information. This is a revisit to our highly acclaimed graphics optimization series we ran in 2015, starting with GTA 5 and The Witcher. Those guides are some of our highest performing content to date on the website, and so it seems about time to try and revisit that. We're starting off with Overwatch, but have just established a new Patreon goal to make this an ongoing effort for future launches with games. And for today's look, the big thing here is that Overwatch is a competitive FPS, as you all know. That means it has different needs than something like GTA. So for this guide, we will be looking at testing individual graphic settings to see which of them has the biggest impact on performance, and then tuning those settings jointly, so looking at multiple of them, tuning them together, and producing somewhat optimized settings for our hardware we're testing on. This also provides a way to hopefully offset the graphics so they don't look terrible, because if you ran the game just at the lowest settings, which of course would give you the best frame rate, maybe if that's all you care about, the game really doesn't look that great. But there are ways to get it to retain some of the visual quality and still have your high frame rate too. For this testing, we're using our standardized case testing bench with three different GPUs, the GTX 1080 Gaming X to establish a baseline, the 1050 2GB card, and the RX 480 Gaming X 8GB card. Our case test bench is defined in the article linked in the description below, along with all the other methodology if you want to know what CPU, memory, and all of that were in it and it normally uses the 1080 Gaming X. So we started there to establish the best possible scenario. Some matches were conducted against real players at all epic settings on the Oasis map, and that yielded an in-game frame rate of roughly 188 FPS average on the GTX 1080. The other two cards, the 1050 and 40 Gaming X, provided a wide range of frame rates that established our thesis of tackling a potential GPU bottleneck in Overwatch, by looking at optimizing for something like, again, the 1050. The 1050 runs at about 60 FPS average with lows in the 40s, the 480 was about 99 with lows in the 60s and 80s, and again, this is just a really quick ad hoc test to establish a premise, and that's not bad, but we can definitely improve it. So any improvement we see here will scale to other resolutions as well, which is beneficial for high-end GPU users with higher res displays. So all we've done so far is establish that there's room for improvement in the GPU category with this test bench. That's good, because that's what we're testing for and trying to optimize for today, is a lower-end GPU or a GPU constraint, for example, when you're looking at higher resolutions and trying to tank some settings in favor of the higher res, like 1440. For full testing methodology, as always, check the link in the description below for Patrick's write-up. He talks about how we tested all of this stuff, and if you need to know exactly how we tested, it's all there. As for the settings in the game, we have some definitions of the graphic settings for Overwatch, and they're actually straight from Blizzard, so they're not speculation, they're correct. We noticed that a lot of the guides, including our own beta guide from years and years ago, had either outdated information on the settings or incorrect information on the settings, so this should settle a lot of that because it's from the devs. That will be in the article as well, because it frankly isn't the focus of the, the video content. It would take a long time to read through all of it. That's not really a chartable thing. Uh, so we're going to move on straight to the research and analysis and synthetic testing, then get into bot matches versus human matches and see if human matches are more intensive, and if so, how do we deal with that in benchmarking. Starting with initial research and synthetic testing, we use the practice range to define an initial test procedure and outline our expectations for each of the settings, then formed bot and human matches as stated to sort things out further. Using the GTX 1050 and starting at maximum settings, we turned each setting down in the practice map, and the chart on the screen now shows the results for all of that tuning. This establishes our baseline for what we should focus on the most during the more intensive competitive matches and further testing where we're fine-tuning the settings rather than just toggling them. And these numbers highlight that dynamic reflections, 
shadows, and local fog detail are all worthy of attention, which we'll highlight in the charts. We're happy to see that texture and model detail don't seem to impact frame rate as heavily as some other options, as they're the ones that have the most visible impact on the game from a graphics quality perspective as a user. Texture quality is most dependent on VRAM as always, given that the higher quality textures of higher resolutions will require more video card memory, but we never really saw VRAM request size exceed two gigabytes on the GTX 1050 at 1080p. Of course, higher resolution will change this. Just quickly noting, here's a frame time chart showing the biggest change, dynamic reflections, and that's with it toggled versus everything maxed. So you can get a better idea of what's happening in the 1% and low percent metrics. We saw about a 43% improvement from baseline by toggling dynamic reflections off and about a 14% improvement over baseline with shadow toggling, which you can see if we switch back to our FPS chart we had originally on the screen, and about the same for fog. Disabling ambient occlusion gave us about 8% performance back, and we're also seeing a theoretical maximum throughput of 207 FPS average with the 1050 OC card and with the bench used. This means that we're bumping into constraints at that point at a hardware level, as the GTX 1080 is capable of achieving a higher frame rate, so we're not at any kind of engine constraint. We've got some screenshots here to show the highest graphics quality, then medium, then lowest in the practice range. These are embedded in the article if you'd like more time to look them over and study for differences without YouTube's compression, but it gives you a foundation of what the difference looks like just from the presets. Time to get to the real tests, the ones that weren't done on the practice range where obviously no one ever plays this game anyway. So for the real test, we fought bots with the same team and character composition, same exact character models, same uh, characters per team. So that's important. And then we also used the same bot difficulty, which I believe Patrick had set to medium, and the same map, which was Numbani for all tests. The objective was set to attack, and we played offense for every single round because we're playing against bots, so it's easier to control how the round progresses an attack and that means we can just control the test easier because we can define when things progress or end or whatever. Uh, for human player matches, same thing, same map, same objectives, all that stuff. The only difference is humans and obviously they have full control over which characters they choose so that impacts FPS potentially but that's what our FPS benchmarks set out to determine. Let's first determine if human matches are significantly more demanding than bot matches of an equal player count. These recordings happened over about a five to six minute period and were averaged over the duration, which is really the only way to validate a potential test method as there's so much variation between matches that a short test pass does not contain all the information required to make a sufficient analysis. This chart shows some of the slight differences between bot and human matches on Numbani and Hollywood, but nothing significant. We saw a two FPS swing from bot to human matches on Numbani and could easily account for that and what is experienced during each match. That would be the usual variation between what players are doing in the game. Considering those changes match to match, these numbers are actually remarkably close, and they illustrate that we can safely test using full bot matches without concern of misrepresenting real gameplay. They are effectively identical, and bot matches, of course, are much easier to control for in testing, so that is the preferable mode of test. This also gives us more control over the testing, since again, medium bots can be easily controlled in a fashion that doesn't conflict with our ability to perform specific actions in the game, for example, not dying, and these results being effectively equal establish our baseline for validating a new test method going forward. Here's the next chart. We're now playing full bot matches on Numbani with otherwise epic settings and 1080p on the GTX 1050 OC from MSI, then we're manually tuning individual settings. As mentioned above, dynamic reflections, shadows, and local fog were the top candidates for optimization. We also chose to test effects, detail, lighting, and refraction since we felt that these were options that didn't have a real chance to affect things in the practice range and could potentially contribute to 1% and 0.1% low dips in game. The trend seen in the practice range continued in game, although the actual frame rates changed drastically, as you might expect. The maximum improvement again resulted from disabling dynamic reflections, but the 0.1% low value remained at 45 FPS. Turning down effects detail, lighting, and refractions produced frame rates indistinguishable from the maximum settings, even in the 1% and 0.1% low categories. This confirmed our choice of three top candidates for optimization. And so getting rid of dynamic reflections, now in our bot match for real world representation, we see that this frees up 30% increase headroom in average FPS, 
For shadows, we see a 17% headroom improvement while setting everything to low posts a maximum possible change of 210%, and that is from the highest settings. Let's narrow things down. Here's a chart focusing on three settings offset from Epic, all on low, and then one setting with reflections, shadows, and fog set to medium, and a final config with them disabled. These are the three most impactful to frame rate, so this begins our final optimization attempt. On the 1050, simply turning these settings down to medium keeps frame rates well above 60 FPS on average, with about a 50% improvement jointly. Disabling them completely gave 117 FPS average, or a 95% improvement jointly, but again, they're disabled completely, and that's not great. Or about 69 to 70 FPS lower than turning every single setting to minimum. We've got a frame time plot that demonstrates the low values better as well, where we can see that the improvement from completely toggling these settings is noteworthy over the medium configuration, but we find the frame times with medium to be acceptable given the visual trade-off. Shadows can have an impact as well on competitive ability, and as one setting we'd prefer not to completely disable. Here's a look at the same configurations with the RX 480. The RX 480 often bumped up against the 300 FPS cap under these configurations, and that means the 267 FPS average that you can see on the chart is something that would be higher without said cap. At maximum settings, the 0.1% low was still above 60 FPS, perfectly playable. However, the three relevant settings disabled yielded a 0.1% low rise to nearly 120 FPS. Good news for owners of 120Hz displays with a strict zero tolerance policy. Scaling here shows medium settings boosting from our 99 FPS baseline by 44%, comparable to the GTX 1050 scaling, as you might expect we see an 81% improvement by disabling reflections and shadows completely. And that sums it up. So for people who have lower end GPUs that are causing a bottleneck in the system for Overwatch, meaning your GPU is the constraint because it is not powerful enough to keep up with the CPU, which in this game is completely reasonable. CPU is not that high demand. Uh, the order of settings to experiment would be this. You should change dynamic reflections first and then shadow detail and then local fog detail. And at this point, you should be able to push those other settings to higher values without a huge performance hit while clawing back some of your FPS from the more drastic changes in the categories listed here. Ambient occlusion is another option for anyone who's truly desperate, but we saw maximally something like an 8% difference there. So uh, that is something we try to leave on, though if you really need something else, you could play with ambient occlusion as well. Other settings don't significantly affect the GPU and decrease quality with no real appreciable benefit in terms of frame rate throughput. And turning them off completely in terms of things like shadows is unnecessary and undesirable because shadows can actually provide some competitive advantage depending on how well you uh, play and that type of thing. So uh, as always, thank you for watching. You can find the full guide linked in the article below and subscribe for more patreon.com slash gamers nexus to help us produce these things specifically because they do require a lot of effort for game specific guides uh, and they aren't always quite as interesting as hardware benchmarks for our audience so just as a side note using his own guide patrick was able to get his fps above 70 with his aging r9 285 xfx gpu so not bad at all definitely beneficial. Hopefully this helps you. Let us know. I'll see you all next time.